The museum is a charity. Uh, we have to find ways of generating funds that keep us going. So what we do um, commercially helps us do what we do for education. One of those things that we do um, is hire out some of our machines to the world of TV and film, documentaries, all that kind of stuff, live events even, um, and make them do things that, that the director of this program might want them to do. So this is where the idea came from, to be honest. So um, we were uh, approached by if I remember rightly, somebody on Twitter, um, I think Graham, Graham Linehan was looking for some interesting props to put on the set for the second series of the IT crowd um, and had just put a post out saying, what should I have there? Um, and somebody said, hey, you should get Computer Museum to, to supply some stuff. Um, and um, something, I don't quite, can't quite remember the rest of the, uh, what happened, but ultimately um, we were in contact and we said, well, okay, we've got some things. We talked about some stuff, but then we said, well, actually, if you had something like that behind Moss, the people that know are going to freak out because it's quite a rare machine. Um, they're going to see that and go, well, yeah, but that, that just doesn't, that would not normally belong in, a, in an office like that. They loved the idea and that's it, it was there. I think we had a VIC-20 there and a, we had a ZX81 in a wooden case, all sorts of weirdness, but that was kind of the star. And then all of a sudden they started getting emails going, is, is, isn't that an Altair in the background? <laughs> um, and, and so, yeah, job done. But that's what it was there for. It's just that little nod did, to the nerds. Did you provide the internet? This gen? It's the internet. <laughs> we didn't provide the internet. In fact, I tried to get the internet from him and he wouldn't give it to me. It's on his shelf still. It's in his living room, I think. Um, yeah, he wouldn't do it. But I know the box that it was made from. What other projects have you worked on? What sorts of things have you supplied? Um, I've done loads of stuff. It's quite weird, actually, the number of places, old computers and old... Because it's more than just computers, so we supply old TVs. It's just old tech, fax machines, phones, anything, you know? Um, so it's, you know, Christmas, everything gets a bit nostalgic, so a lot of the, the big supermarkets come to us and want old things to show those old scenes of old family life. Um, I keep saying old, and it's not that old. The recent one uh, is, is Ready Player One. The first person to find the egg will inherit half a trillion dollars. We've supplied a lot of stuff to them. Actually, not so much computers, but tons and tons of software. Um, games packages and things, um, so they kind of wiped us out nearly of, of software. As far as I'm aware, and I haven't even seen it yet, just kind of implemented our archive um, as part of biology, possibly. Um, so that will be interesting to see. Can't wait to go and see that. Um, but but yeah, there's uh, quite a few films. Um, Eddie the Eagle had old TVs in, and yeah, whenever they might want somebody interacting with a the computer, then we might supply the machine, spec it up, tell them what kind of machine they would have had. Um, and then maybe write some software that allows the actor just to basically do that um, and, uh, and it come up with whatever the script requires. Um, so we have a box called Code Like a Boss. It's basically just an Arduino in a box with a serial port so we can connect it to old terminals and whatever's required of the actor. They do that and perfect, perfectly formed C code appears on the screen or, or a letter to the president, I don't know, whatever, um, just appears. Have you, have you got that nearby? Can we see it? Um, well, Ed, it's, at, it's out at the moment. Uh, it, it's in um, uh, Hackney at the minute on, on set, so um, no. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but we could do. Maybe we could do another video about that later. It's, it's just an Arduino. It's nothing clever, but uh, it's good fun. What's the weirdest thing or the wackiest thing that you've been asked for and that you've provided? <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> we've been asked for edible uh, paper clips, which... <laughs> which was interesting. I don't think they really looked at the website to see what we did. Um, but we get, we, we get asked for um, dentist chairs and uh, completely wild, weird and wonderful stuff. Um, but actually on more of a computer, on, on topic, um, for those that do actually read the website, um, we, well, we're currently being asked for um, what I thought was 50 IBM PCs. Um, from a phone call you've just overheard is now 60. Um, and we couldn't even do the 50, let alone the 60, so I don't know what's going on there. Um, so, yeah, but that, that's fun, you know. We, um, it's really hard to do. We've, we've got about 18 machines here that we can use. Um, but yeah, we don't know what we do for the rest. We're gonna have to work that one out. What's the trickiest part of it? Is it, is it finding the things? Is it making them work? What's the trickiest thing about this industry? Um, <laughs> timing. Uh, they, everything's wanted tomorrow. That's a problem. Um, yeah, I think the, the machines themselves, the, um, I mean, we, everybody's well aware of how reliable the machines are or aren't, maybe. Um, so we have to make sure they know that. But that means us then, maybe if they want one machine, they'll have two. 
we'll have to have a backup in some way. Because actually, if you're on set and you're, you're shooting, that could be 50 people. You know, their time is all held up by this thing not doing what it's supposed to be doing. That doesn't go down very well. So, um, so generally speaking, we try and have a second machine. Um, even if, and if you can't do a second machine, just another way of doing it, just a, a backup plan. Um, might be a different machine and done in a different way. But as long as that shot is done that day, that's all that matters. So we have to work in those kind of, it's, I wouldn't call it pressured, but it's, it's got to happen. And that's actually the good fun of it. You've got a whole bunch of people that are there. Whatever happens that day, those shots will be got. And everybody has a very much of a can-do attitude. Like, if we can't do this, let's try another way. Let's do this and let's work out a way. Uh, I really enjoy that. Um, but, but yeah, I think for the machines themselves, uh, it is just those little things where they say, could it just do this? You know, can we get, you know, all the colours in the rainbow on this machine? No, it's an 8-bit machine. It does 8 and that's it. You know, oh, really? We wanted to show a photo. Um, so, yeah. I do, do, do you have to temper people's expectations that way in terms of what would have been possible, though? Yeah. Because we've all seen those programmes on TV where they go, Bring up the CCTV now, enhance. <laughs> we try and make sure that at least the person we're talking to in the first place is aware of what is and what isn't possible. And actually, we, we end up consulting on that basis anyway in the first place. Um, but the thing is, there's more than one person involved. So as it ends up down the line, um, we do get some interesting requests on set and upset people when it can't quite do what they want. The nice thing about it is that I suppose, if go back to when I was less than 10 probably, so 70s, um, this is embarrassing. I, um, I used to have a cardboard box with a screen cut out of it and a cardboard box with a keyboard cut out of it and I used to pretend that I had a computer because we didn't, you know, I didn't get one until about 1980. Um, have you, have you still got that? <laughs> yeah, of course. It's part of the collection. No, I don't still have it. Have you got a um, picture? You've got to send us a picture. I don't have a picture or anything. You didn't take pictures back then, did you? Really? No, you well, know, it was expensive. It was, yeah. It's, you, you took pictures of your holidays. You didn't take pictures of everyday life. Yeah. Um, no, I don't. But, but the, the ironic part is that, you know, I'm now 48 now. Um, and I'm basically doing the same thing. You're still pretending with those machines. And it's actually really good fun. So when you've got um, a machine there and then you, you write some, it's all fairly simple stuff, but you write some code to put up, um, the latest one is kind of a spy number crunching thing coming up on the screen. It's great fun, you know, it, it, it doesn't have to work, it's not really doing anything, it's just what it looks like. And then in the background of the film, you've got this thing just ticking over. Um, it might not even be in focus, but you know that, you know, what you did to do it. Yeah, getting paid to do things that don't really actually work, um, but they look good. The other one, I suppose, we forgot about Micro Man, which is one of the early ones we've done. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that absolutely marvellous? That was fantastic. And again, you know, you're just writing these little routines and things that um, reflect what was going on at the time. It's a simple little graph drawing programs and stuff. And actually, it's, some of this stuff you do, and actually quite a lot of it sometimes, doesn't even make it on the film anyway. So the, the computer might be just there, but the camera was pointing just here, and all that works for nothing, but... But you were in Microman as well, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, it was... Um, so, so I worked hard on that film, really hard. Um, and just giving it all the time I could. I didn't get any haircut for a little while. Um, and then one day when they were at the museum and we were choosing bits and pieces to have around, um, they said, Can't, you've got kind of 70s looking hair. Um, do you want to be in the film? And um, I ignored the, uh, the remark, and, uh, but, but yeah, of course I'm going to want to be in it. Jesus, it's like trying to read Braille through a pair of gardening gloves. So yeah, I had this little bit part in the acorn scenes. Technically, I kind of played David Johnson Davies, but they didn't credit me. So, um, 